be people around you that are giving you agita or just getting on your nerves or whatever it is, your workplace, your home, whatever it is. But what about you? Ask Holy Spirit, what is it in me that I need to identify, that I need to address that I've been acting jerky, that I just have not changed, that I'm acting the same way all the time, that I'm in constantly in offense. If you're constantly sensitive over people, if you're always getting offended, there's an issue with you, not everybody else. Again, that's not to put you down, but that's to say, okay, Lord, how do I get rid of it? You know, and again, I don't mean this offensively. But I, the lady who mentored me was an ex-madam. She, she mentored me. She was in prison for eight years. And most of her clients were from D.C. So that's why she did eight years. She was really tough. Elena, you know her. My sisters know her. Very tough. She didn't care what you felt. Now, I'm not saying we're to act that way. But sometimes we get so in church where we're so worried about everybody else. What about the fear of God? What about, are you concerned about what's making him happy and what's not? And that was our thing. Like, she drove that in us about living a holy life, not a self-righteous where you're looking down at everybody else kind of a life, a life where you love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, that you don't want to sin. You don't want to party any longer. You don't want to have sex outside of marriage anymore. You don't want to do these things. Because you love God. See, that's the difference. And she was tough, and she did not make any excuse for her position. But I'll tell you, we saw people set free, delivered. She'd call people out. We'd prophesy. We would go to prisons for, I went to prisons for three years preaching the gospel and seeing these people who had no hope. They're in prison. And yet God turned their life around where they were living freer than people out in the world. See, that's what Jesus Christ will do for you. So anyway, I want to read to you um, something from Derek Prince. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Now, uh, and Derek Prince wrote an amazing book. It's called Blessings or Curses by Derek Prince. It's an old book. It's been around forever, but it's so worth the read. And uh, a quote from him says, A curse could be likened to a long, evil arm stretched out from the past. It rests upon you with a dark, oppressive force that inhibits the full expression of your personality. You never feel completely free to be yourself. You sense that you have, always a, you have a potential within you that's never fully developed. And you always expect more of yourself than you're able to achieve. One word sums this feeling up, frustration. I'm telling you, I always feel frustrated. Like, God, why can't I break through? What is the problem here? And then when I started to learn about this and I started to pray through, and that's the cool thing. It's praying. It's, it's surrendering your life. It's breaking, coming out of alignment with the lie. Because you know what happens? We get into a habit. And we, we focus on that. And in the habit, Jesus wants to set us free from this habit. And, and you're frustrated. And then what do we do? I don't know about you, but I used to get mad at God. Like, like oh, my God, and make, you make it so hard. You know, when he's telling me, no, I'm not making it hard. You're not listening to me. You know, I want, a, I want a one, two, three step. Give me that one, two, three step, and I want to be done with this thing, right? <laughs> so the Lord's like, yeah, it's not that easy. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's a surrender. It's a love walk that we develop with God. All right, so that's what Derek Prince says. So I encourage you, if you haven't ever read through Deuteronomy 28, for a lot, because I don't have time, um, We'll uh, just read through it because it talks about the blessings and curses you choose, right? And so, again, remember what I said. The enemy's goal in this is to prevent intimacy. Now, I've, I know of people, I know of churches, I know of people that preach and say you can't, you don't go to your past, you don't have, um, you know, none of us could have a curse and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what I say to that. Blah, blah, blah. Because we have seen too many people get set free. Right. We have seen too many people's lives transformed. Too many. Doesn't mean you don't have a pro uh, an issue or a problem, but it means breakthrough. Debbie, come up here. Can you just share a minute? Now, Debbie Tag came, uh, has been with us for a couple years. <laughs> Debbie Tag. De Debbie Taglieri. And Debbie. She was going to be called. I know. And Debbie. <laughs> Debbie had some issues in her past, right? Would you like to share about your illegitimacy and the issues there and the, 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 the bastard curse? Anything for you. Thank you. 
I love her. Um, well, when I was uh, 19, I was unsaved, I was unwed, and I was pregnant. Came from a very bad background, family background, same Sicilian dysfunction. Um, and, I, <laughs> and I had my son, my wonderful, beautiful gift, um, who's now 40. And um, when he was three, I was looking at him, and I was kind of annoyed at him for looking like his dad, who was gone, out of the picture. And um, I realized that I could not be his mom the way he needed me to be if I didn't forgive his father. Now, I didn't know what I was doing. He just kind of left the table, and I said to God, because he was the only one I really had to talk to, I can't be angry at him and love him so you need to fix this. And I really did just leave it there and focus on loving and raising my son. 17 years later, Adam met his dad for the first time. And as he approached us, I realized I wasn't angry. I, wasn't, I, I was filled with compassion for him. Um, he missed this wonderful life. Um, and he can't get that back. We went home and we pulled every spare copy of Adam's life from babyhood up and put it together for him and gave it to him as a Christmas gift um, so that he could at least see that. They have a great relationship now. He's got two sisters and a brother. They're very close. Um, and, and we're good together. He and I are good together. We, you know, we sat together at the wedding. My son met a girl in church. They both serve the Lord. But you have to choose. You have to choose to forgive. You can ask God, but if you don't play your part, you know, it's like, here, you know, I'm sick, but I'm not taking the medicine you prescribed. But we also, Adam had to choose to forgive. But then I found King of Kings almost 20 years ago. Yeah, because then I learned about all of this. And so even though it seemed like everything was great, we all, we worked on this. Cindy, Trisha, uh, Pastor Easter, we all kind of worked on this together. And I learned to go and break it officially, formally, break it from Adam's life, from my life. Um, and, and God has been just so faithful in, in doing that. Wait, wait. So tell them when we prayed and broke the curse, what happened immediately about the, um, the job increase and, and the and inheritance and your, your apartment? This is good stuff. This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. So I, I had gone to church, and I was up front, and I don't know, and I, I was hesitant in the beginning. And after, we were in the high school, Burns High, and after service, you know, after worship, pastor said, greet somebody. And I turn, and she's staring at me. And she said, I want you to come, come back up here after service because you've got something on you, and I want to break it off. And she left me like that. And I'm sitting in service going, ew. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up and we prayed. And, and she prayed to um, break all these curses. Um, and she prayed an inheritance over Adam. And, you know, and um, it was specific words, inheritance. I would, I would have an inheritance for Adam. That was Sunday. Monday I went to work and my boss came out of his office and I was living in a condo that he owned. That was part of my work package. And he said, my wife and I were talking yesterday, Sunday, and decided that there is a way, and I called my lawyer, I don't know who calls their lawyer on a Sunday, uh, my boss, <laughs> wealthy people. And he said, we found a way that I can give you that condo legally without you paying for it. So, so it took 10, 10 years as he transferred year by year a percentage of the condo. And in December of 2018, 10 years exactly, um, was the last transfer. Um, but he did say, when he, when he came out that day, he did say, we want you to have an inheritance Jesus. to leave your son. <laughs> Which freaked me out. So, and it, and, it, and it came to pass, but 
again, obedience, as Trisha said, obedience, forgiving, walking in forgiveness, and choosing to forgive. And you got a big bonus, and your stove that didn't work for 10 years. Worked. Working. Stove worked. Um, washing machine stopped leaking. I mean, like, in, in 24 hours. All this stuff happened. Um, and, and again, you know, Adam uh, is, is doing great with his dad, and his, you know, his dad just came through again. Um, thank you all for you who prayed for Adam this week. He was uh, admitted to the hospital, and everything's great, and he's fine. Your prayers are great. Um, and the, the, that morning, the next morning, I said to the Lord, um, you know, they need a car. The car died, and, and they need a car, and I don't have the means to give them a new car, but you do, so you have to fix this. That's pretty much all I say. You have to fix this. Later that day, his dad called me and said, I talked to Adam, but I don't think he's giving me the whole story of what's going on. So I told him some things, and then I said, and by the way, he needs a new car. And he said, oh, all right, I'll give him a car. <laughs> so they picked up the car last night. Come on. So awesome. it's just, you know, doing it. It's, it's accepting that God is our, I mean, he's just, I just say, Dad, fix this. Um, and he does. He comes through. But you, you've got to do your share. You've got to forgive. It's a huge, big thing. Um, and, you know, Adam chose to forgive. And I said, they have a, I was just at his dad's house for Adam's 40th birthday party. We do it. We're all fine. And it's, it's a life choice. But breaking the curses. I mean, we did, we walked through this, Cindy, Easter, a lot of times at their lap on the floor in tears. But we did it, and we walked through it, and I would go home, and I would walk through it with Adam, and I said he, he met his beautiful wife, the, more than I prayed for, uh, in a daughter-in-law, in church. They both serve in church, so... The cup, yes, it really does. When you ask for a testimony, I can say which one, because God just, just blesses. He just does, so we walk in it. Yes, and, and for the very first time, you know, I always thought of Adam as my son with God. He's my son with God. And, and even though things with his dad have been fine, I just never acknowledged that he was our child. Um, and when I was speaking to him on the phone that night, I said to him, he's our son, and we, as his parents, we have to do what we can, no matter how old they are, because it doesn't matter if they're four or 40, that, this doesn't change. And, and I realized that it was the first time I'd ever said, our son. And, you know, I, I, I got to, I was driving, we were talking on the phone, I got to where I was going, and I just stopped, and I said to the Lord, did I say that? <laughs> and it's just, it was, it was a blessing for me, too, to finally, you know, have that ability to share my son as a parent with his parent. And, and it was a big, it really was a big deal for my heart as well, so... Good. Amen. So God wants it. We all have an inheritance. But see, we can walk in hate. I mean, I know many ex-people, ex-partners with each other, you know, hate each other. You know, you mention your name. They do the, you know, the my loik and the other, all the other crazy, crazy Italian stuff we all used to do. But you see, God is saying, for those of you who are not Italian, that was putting a curse on you in, in Italian. So, you know, but, and, and, you know, everybody thought it was perfectly normal. But see, we have an inheritance, and that's a key thing. What's our inheritance with God? We have a covenant. When you become born again, it's eternal. And it's, the covenant is healing. It's deliverance. It's restitution. It's restoration. I mean, I remember talking with Debbie. We all do about her the family and, and the father just not being involved at all. Now God brought restoration. They didn't know how that was going to happen. Hey, Paul, you just got in touch with your son that you haven't been in touch with for many years. God brought restoration. You know, God is the God of all impossibility. And so that's what God wants us to understand, his amazing love for us. In, in, in uh, Galatians 4, 3 through 7 in the Passion, it says, so, is, so it is with us. When we were juveniles, we were enslaved under the hostile spirits of the world. But when that era, we're in a new era, came to an end and the time of fulfillment had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the written law. Yet all was... Yet all of this was so that he would redeem and set 
free and set us all free, it's supposed to be. Right? And so it says here, and those held hostage to the written law so that we would receive our freedom and full legal adoption as his children. And so that we would know for sure that we are his true children, God released the spirit of sonship into our hearts, moving us to cry out intimately, my father, you're our true father. Now we're no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. And because we're his, we can access everything our father has, for we are heirs of God through Jesus the Messiah. You see, the enemy wants us to keep living our life as though we're slaves, that we're never going to get free. Oh, I'm always going to have this drug addiction. No, you're not. You're going to have it if you believe the lie. But no, that's not your call in life. Are you kidding me? Jesus died on the cross for you to be a drug addict? Really? Come on. If, you, if you're in that mindset, whatever addiction you're battling, I'm here to tell you today, Jesus Christ came to set you free. He does not want you living in that place of destitution. He doesn't want you living in that place of bondage and suicide and, and fear of man and hatred for self. He doesn't want you living like that. So the spirit of adoption, again, enables us to understand that we are sons and we are daughters. We don't have to earn it. You, you saw the scripture. It says the spirit of sonship, when you accept Jesus into your heart, has entered into you. You are adopted into the kingdom. You are not on the outside looking in. I can't tell you how many times. I know I've said it myself. I hear people. I feel like I'm on the outside looking in. Well, today I'm going to tell you, you're welcome in. The door is open. You're not on the outside looking in. God's saying, come home. Come, allow me to embrace you with my love. You don't have to be afraid of it. So a bastard curse is generational bondage. And remember, it targets intimacy. You know, we were at a, I was at a meeting with Pat Wenzel, and, and the woman was talking about generational poverty. Well, that's a curse. It's a mindset that we have. To, you can be rich and still have a poverty mindset. But it's a curse, generational poverty. So many people just submit themselves to that and say, well, I'll always just make it. Baloney. Come on, we have to break the limits off. God's saying, I came to set you free. I don't want you living like that any longer. Do you want your kids, those of you who have children, living like that? No. No, you want them to, to, to prosper and to move on. All right, so in Romans 8, 14, I'm going to close. We'll pray. What time is it? All right, so listen to this one. It says, the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Right. How many of you still feel that? But you have received a spirit of full acceptance. Listen, it doesn't matter what you feel. This is what God's saying. You are fully accepted in the kingdom. It says, a full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God. You will never feel orphaned as he rises up within us. Our spirit joins him in saying the words of tender affection. Beloved Father, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Oh, that's, that's his love song over us. And since we are his true, true children, we qualify to share all his treasures for indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that is and all that he has. Wow. Good that is good. And we will experience being glorified with him, provided that we accept his sufferings as our own. Uh -huh. All right. So, so God wants us to understand we are accepted. Now, if there's sin in your life, you have to repent for it. I mean, if you're having sex outside of marriage, that's a problem. That's sin. The Bible calls that sin. I didn't write the book. He wrote it. He said, no fornication, no adultery, no getting drunk. There's, there's all kinds of sexual sin. That's sin. And he has it for a reason, for us to live a prosperous, healthy, abundant life. He doesn't want us to hate. He doesn't want us to walk in unforgiveness. See, we put measures on sin, but sin is sin. But sexual sin is pretty up there. Think about it, 400 years. It goes down, that bastard curse is 400 years. That's, sex, that's, that's any kind of sexual defilement, and we're going to pray through that in a minute. 
So in Hosea 4, 6, in the Amplified, it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My law where I reveal my will. And that's why we have got to really read through the Bible. We have to learn to study it. We have to know the ins and outs of it. Because if you're stuck somewhere, it could be your lifestyle, it could be sin, but if you're stuck somewhere, find out. Ask Holy Spirit, shine your light on me, show me. Jesus came to set us free. Listen, you know, we, you know, we have stuff in our lives, we all do. But man, when you live in that peace, and you know, even though all turmoil stuff's going on outside, of you, no one says that you don't have issues. But, man, when you know you have someone to go to and run into his refuge, Carolyn released that word that he's our refuge yeah. and he's our strength. He's a very present help in time of trouble, that you're, you're there and that you're not alone with him. Oh, my gosh. Man, that peace that you get. Pills can't do it. Right. It might for a season, but I'm telling you, I tried a lot. <laughs> it doesn't work. Pills don't work like Jesus. Right. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's that supernatural God of peace that only Jesus Christ can set you free and give you that peace when you have so much stuff going on, but you can lay your head down on the pillow. That's God. So when people look and say, oh, they're so fanatical or they worship too long, you know what I say to that? Jesus set me free, and I'll do what I need to do to honor him. Because it's not about what makes you happy or makes you feel comfortable. It's about me honoring and uh, having the fear of God in my life. Because I am so tired of everybody being so concerned about, I don't want to offend you, honey. I don't want to offend you, honey. And we're offending him left and right because in the church there's so much blatant sin and sexual impurity and, and hatred and insecurity and lying and gossip. That's got to stop. That's why the church has been so powerless. We can't live this way any longer. It's got to stop. So if you're doing it, then ask yourself, what's your problem? Why? See, God wants us to say, look, God, forgive me. Don't we all have to do that? I do it all the time. You know, you know when you're driving and stuff and how aggravated people get you, just that alone can cause you to major sin. It's true. Even when Peter's driving, it causes me to fall into sin. So... <laughs> But, you know, it's like, oh, Jesus, let the other person in. Don't let him in, Peter. You know, he's letting everybody in, you know. Anyway, that's separate. But, you know, so we have to, we have to just say, Lord, what is it? I want to live a life that's holy and pleasing to you. I, we were at a meeting, and they said that they don't even teach that you should get married in church. I'm like, what? You don't need to be married. Keep that curse going on. That's right. Let's keep that 400-year curse going on of illegitimacy. Come on. Let's keep doing it. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And it says here, because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge. That's the priest of the Lord who's supposed to know the word of God. It says, I will reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will forget your children. Are you kidding me? That onus is on us. We are accountable. Now, again... He's merciful. Hear me. Mercy triumphs over our judgment, but then after a while gets old with him too. You're saved a long time, you can't straddle the fence any longer. It's either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, he'll spit you out of the mouth. That's the word of God. So there's a vast difference between living and believing in God and being in covenant with him. I saw that look of terror on her face. Jeez. 34 years, man. <laughs> now I just felt like I had a word that I, I wanted to share because it's really um, common for us to think we're okay with somebody that hurt us, and we, we are at a certain level, but then you wouldn't be happy to see them. You know. So I just felt like the Lord is asking you, is there somebody like that in your life that hurt you, but that if you saw them, you wouldn't be happy to see them? And it could be one of your parents that's passed, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with them, but when I get to heaven, they're not top on my list to go find them. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's probably a good indication that you could go deeper. And that it's hard. I, you know, I know it's hard because it brings up a lot of memories and things of, of pain, but ultimately we're in more pain. Just like Debbie said, you know, like not doing it was harder 
than doing the forgiveness. And then you get all this amazing stuff and you would think, but they're gone already. I can't make right. There's still something aligning in our hearts that's not right. And just by that simple act of obedience to the Lord that I'm going to, like she said, she actually can enjoy being with the father of her son now and where before didn't want to be anywhere near him. So it's a condition of our hearts that matters. So I felt strongly I should say this because I'm guessing somebody's here that's dealing with that. Um, so somehow just ask the Lord for that supernatural ability to let them go. And that the test in my mind would be to be happy when you see that person again. It doesn't have to be that they passed. could be somebody who's still alive right now, right? And, and not just be waiting for when are you going to pay them back, God, for what they did? Because restitution, you know, I know that was part of the word today, but it's actually for your heart to say, I'm praying for a revival in that person's life, and I'm praying that the Lord will do a mighty work in them, just like he did in my life, because they hurt me out of their pain, but God can heal their pain too. Amen? Amen. And that's important, you know, that you choose to forgive. Choose to forgive. See, God brings the healing into your heart. All right, so I want to move on. So are you all familiar in First Samuel 9 about Mephibosheth? All right, so I just want to read a portion to you because this can give you an indication of what I'm talking about uh, in addition, in, in, in the word, in addition to what we all are experiencing. And, and Mephibosheth's dad was Jonathan, and he and Saul, I mean um, David, had a really great relationship, and there was a covenant between them. And so what happened was uh, Saul, I mean, yeah, Saul and Jonathan, Saul was his dad, and Saul was king, and he was a king that we usually refer to that, you know, really came outside of God's will, was very fleshly and all that. And so jo uh, Saul was killed, Jonathan was killed, but they had a covenant. And this covenant is, is it's likened to how God is with us, okay? And, and so I'm just going to pick it up because of lack of time. In Samuel, 1 Samuel 9, 7 through 9, um, I, it's, on, it's somewhere <laughs> on, on your, there you go. Okay. David said to him, do not be afraid, for I will certainly show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul, and you shall always eat at my table. Listen to how Mephibosheth responded. Again, Mephibosheth laid himself face down and said, What is your servant that you would be concerned for a dead dog like me? And so Mephibosheth was scared because rightfully uh, David could have killed him because when one era of kingship, when they're, when they're killed or died off, pretty much everybody in their you know, kingdom got killed if they were in a leadership role. And so he said, What is it? So you need to check your heart. You know, God is saying to you today, I want to break you free Amen. out of bondages, out of curses, out of stuff. You know, you can just look at your family pattern and see, like, what's been a consistent pattern in your family. Some of it's habit, but a lot of it's spiritual. And so, you know, it, the deal is asking Holy Spirit and then praying prayers, you know, just saying, Lord, I want to be free of this. I don't want to continue acting or behaving this way. That's what I did. I said, Lord, when I see myself going back in that, that pattern, because you can right? It's like, oh no. And, and so that's why you need to have your daily relationship, your daily time in the word and praise and worship and reading the word. That's why it's so essential. And so he said, oh my gosh, he says, why would you even want to look at me? The shame, you know, I'm messed up. I'm a dead dog. You know, God, when you, if you're thinking like that of any kind of shame in your life, that's not God. He would never look down at you. He died on a cross for your freedom, not for you to walk in shame. Right. All right? right? So then in 1 Samuel, oh, uh, no, let's see here. Uh, oh, verse 9. Then the king summoned Ziba, who was his servant. Um, that's the one. She was the one that was running with Mephibosheth and dropped him. And Saul's servant said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and to all the families and to the house. And so, see, a lot of times, because of even our mindsets, we don't understand that God is saying, I want you to have it all. I want you to have family restoration and healing and deliverance, etc." So in 1 Samuel, or 2 Samuel 9.10, no, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 9.10, it says, You and your sons and your servants shall cultiv cultivate the land for him, and you shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall always eat at my table. Now, that's what God is saying to us. We will always, we're invited to eat at his table. We're invited to be there. And so 
you know, again, I didn't do as much justice because we don't have much time, but um, just read over that portion of scripture because he saw himself and he was afraid and God knows your heart. The Bible says he knows you from the beginning. He knows you before you were in your mother's womb. He knows how you were going to mess up and he's not surprised, but he's got a game plan for you. And the thing is you have to surrender. The thing is you have to submit to his way of freedom. And it meant her, uh, Debbie was talking about, it was a process. And now there was a, she had, she has to live her life right too. It's not like we're ringing our little bell and here's what I need, God. It's not like that. But I'll tell you, there's no greater God that we serve. Like, I don't, I, believe me, if, if I wasn't in relationship with the Lord, I don't need to be here on a Sunday morning. I have a lot to do at home. The reason is because I'm in relationship with the Lord. I'm aligned with him. That's what we're going to pray about today. Amen. You drive two hours to get here, John Manning, from all the way out past West Point. I mean, you know, we don't need to be here. We're here because we honor God and we love him. But God's saying, we were singing it. And Easter said even last week in prayer, y'all, we're going up higher. God wants to take us up higher. God wants to bring us into new levels of understanding of him. He doesn't want to, I don't want to just stay where I'm at. I know we're always going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Yeah. I'd like to honor Jen Armand over here from Normandy in France over there. We love you. We haven't seen you forever. So, um, but anyway, so, you know, there's covenant names of God. If you can just put that up, I just want to read some of them. There's a lot. Um, so we have some of the covenant names of God. Jehovah Nisi or Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, my banner, the one who protects us, the one who guides us, Yahweh HaKadosh, the Lord who sanctify us. I, I call it Makadesh, but Yahweh Shalom, the Lord, our peace, Yahweh Rapha, he's the Lord, well, that's supposed to be our healer, Rohi, I, I wrote it wrong, sorry, uh, J Yahweh Rohi is the Lord, our shepherd, you can go to the next one, uh, Yahweh Shama is the Lord who's here, Yahweh Sinkanu is the Lord, our righteousness, Yahweh Jireh is the Lord, our provider. See, these are the covenant names of God. You have to understand this is his character. This is who he is. He's saying, listen, Debbie said, Dad, my son needs a car. It's that simple. When you're in relationship and, and, and he owns all the gold and silver and, you know, and, and sometimes it's not so easy as that. But it's, again, we have to just check our mindset. Where have you been angry with the Lord? Have you been resentful with him? I've been at times, and I didn't understand, and, and I was just so annoyed, and I just blamed him because I said, God, you know everything. Why, why do I have to go through this process? Just do it. But he didn't answer me. <laughs> He's like, I got my way of doing things. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, mercy triumphs over judgment, and thank God for his mercy over my life because I would have been fried some of the times the way I spoke to him. You no, know, it's really, I, you know, you just get like cut. And so that frustration piece, I didn't understand everything. And I'm still learning. I haven't arrived, but, but that frustration is gone. Yeah. It's not like it was. Let me tell you. There's Psalm 89, 34, and it amplified. It says, my covenant will I not break or profane or, nor alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. God, excuse me. In Jeremiah, it says that God watches over his word to perform it. In Psalms, it says he magnifies his word over his name. You see, his covenant, he will not break or profane. We have a covenant with God. That's why we can trust him. You might say, yeah, but it doesn't seem that way. I know that. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were going through the fire, they didn't think they were coming out on the other side. But they, there was a fourth man in that fire. But they came out, and they didn't even smell of smoke. It's sometimes, you're going through fires. But I'll tell you, the Lord says he watches over his word to perform it. He's faithful and true. And so God wants us to know that he is on your side. He wants you to understand that he wants you to break out of a mindset, break out of a limited, very limited lifestyle. I said, Lord, I want, when I got saved, I would look at these people and say, I want what that lady has. I knew there was stuff in her life, but she had peace. I would look at her and I saw peace in her eyes. I didn't have peace. I said, I want that. Yeah. And he said, it's yours. You can have it. Yeah. And I devour. I said, well, I'm going to have to learn about this thing. I don't know where born again in New Jersey go to church. I didn't know. I worked for the airlines. And so I never heard of a born again church. Never heard of it in my life. Wow. And I started to read. I'm telling you, 
The power of the word. We cannot get away from the word. You must meditate on the word. But God, I learned about confessing him as my Lord and Savior. If you have not confessed him as Lord and Savior today, we're going to give you that opportunity. It's the best decision I ever made. Best decision I ever made. Right? Uh, and then what do we do? And so you can put that hand, uh, uh, that um, thing up, the slide up, the break free from curses. All right, all right, look, all right. You're right. We'll go there. This is in, from Derek Prince's book, but it's from Deuteronomy 28. Send it, seven indications of a curse. I've taught this here before, but it's worth repeating. When you see in your family line, and I'm talking about a consistent pattern, not if you have one issue. Um, so you have seven indications of a curse, mental or emotional breakdown. All right? How many people, like sometimes you're talking to people and they're constantly sick. I mean, we're saying everybody's getting sick. That could be a problem there. Repeated or chronic sickness, barrenness, tendency to miscarry, have related female problems, constant, okay? Breakdown of marriage and family, right? There's all divorce in your family. That's an indication. Continual financial insufficiency. Well, there, that's a generational bondage of a curse of poverty, right? Being accident prone, calamity, spirit of calamity. When some, when, you know, we've prayed over people where they, I mean, like every other day they fell or had a car accident. Um, history of suicide and unnatural or untimely death. We call it premature death and destruction. All right, there could be a curse operating. I don't know why. I just know that we know how to pray, right. and it's not blaming anybody. Right. It's, Lord, I pray, and we're going to pray a prayer about confessing the sins of our ancestors. Right. I don't know what they did. You know, but you can only imagine, like when we see even some of the old movies of how they lived in those times when they didn't have any guidelines, you, you know, it was great. It was a free-for-all. Right. So, you know, we, we pray the prayer of release. Now... Now you can go to the next one. All right, so breaking free from the curse, all right? So you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That was number one. Confess your sins. I mean, I know a lot of you know this, but I'm repeating it. Repent of all rebellion and sins. Are you still in rebellion? Wow. Ask God for forgiveness for your stuff. Ask God where you have been... Even in where we were in the airlines, I mean, we were flying out the other day and we were sitting in the section that was just for this restaurant. And now it wasn't clear, I, I agree, but the lady, the, the waiter came up to the lady and said to her, ma'am, you can't sit here because this is only for the restaurant. She said, I don't care, I'm sitting here and I'm not leaving. Wow. Now, that could have been me <laughs> a while in the past, just saying. So it wasn't that I was trying to be so judgmental, but I, I knew where she was coming from because it didn't make sense to me. So I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do what the heck I want. How many of you would have had that attitude without a show of hands? And so that's rebellion. That's rebellion. And so even though I said to Peter, I can't believe the rebellion in her. I was so convicted because I know how I could have acted with me telling that waiter, not listening to you. I am sitting here until I'm done with my food. But see, that's that's been the attitude in America. Yes. It's wrong. Do you understand? It's not hurting them. It's hurting us. Right, right. Yeah. And and I did. I said, Oh Lord. I said, I know. I said, and I really wasn't looking down at her a little bit. I did, but not terrible. But then I repented. But but I I knew that that would have been me. Wow. So just saying. So ask for forgiveness. And I did. I said, Lord, oh, my God, I could have been acting jerky like her. That could have been me right now. And, and I was actually getting a little offended on her behalf because it was dumb, right, where they had us sit. Anyway, that's not the story. So <laughs> forgive others who have wronged you. So forgive him. It's, it's, listen, we can't, like my husband said, people may have gone on. They may have passed. You don't have opportunity to make right. But if they, if they hurt your heart, choose to forgive them. Release them from that pain. Right. That keeps you in bondage. Forgiveness is God's gift to us. God. Renounce you. all contact with anything occultic or satanic. I know about the Spanish. I know with that Santeria stuff that you all have to renounce that. But Italians have just as much. And I know pretty much most uh, nationalities have some type of stuff that we got involved in, or our ancestors did, or we did the myloic, and you did the thing during Christmas, and so that it breaks curses. Meanwhile, it's putting curses on you. See, it's the very thing we thought would do the opposite, 
I pray through many, with many people that have been involved with Macumba and Santeria and Brujeria. It puts a curse on your life. It keeps you in bondage. So Jesus Christ wants to set you free. And there are many other. There's satanic ritual abuse stuff, and there's just a lot of stuff that, that we have to be aware of and not put our head in the sand because it's real. And so a lot of the, you know, even just a lot that's out there is all... Um, you know, uh, demonic stuff, a lot of the music. We have to understand. The, but remember what I said? Uh, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, right? We can't just think, oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, they're kidding around. Uh-uh. That's what the enemy wants you to think, too. He gets that snake wrapped around about you, and, and, and you're not living in freedom. So, okay, you can go to the next slide. All right, so we're going to pray. So what I want to do is, I, I thought what would be really good is just to pray corporately a prayer of release, all right? So if you'd like, I, I'd like you to stand. But before you do that, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we'd like to have an opportunity to pray with you. And um, if, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, I, I'd like to give you an opportunity to come on up here because we'll pray. And because Jesus wants you to be free, just like we're going to pray for all of us here today. We want to be free. And it's not just a prayer, it's a lifestyle. Remember, it's a lifestyle of surrendering to God. So is there anybody here who you have not really surrendered your life to the Lord and you have not asked him to be your Lord and Savior? I'll wait. Really, it's the best thing you could ever do. Okay. So what I want to do is um, we're going to pray. Now, again... You don't have to use these exact words. It really comes from your heart. But I just thought if I had it typed out, it would just make it easier to just go along with, okay? All right. So, all right, let me pray first. So, Lord, I just thank you, Father, for victory. Lord, I thank you that it is your desire that we walk in freedom. And that, Lord, you want us to live a blessed, prosperous life. Lord, it says in Thessalonians, you beloved above all else, I want you to live prosperous, spirit, soul, and body. So it's not just finances. It's emotional. It's spiritual. Lord, and we just thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, you were brutally beaten, tortured, nailed to the cross. You were marred in such a way that you were unrecognizable. You were brutally brutally and willingly took that upon yourself so that we can live free and we don't take that lightly lord god we just ask you to open up our eyes lord where we have, where we've had a hard heart or even mocked this even today if you thought some of this was a bunch of baloney ask god why ask him to deal with your heart if you want to keep living the way you're living that's okay but but you know what he he even in that mess he 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 wants you so ask him. Dialogue with him. He's real. So, Lord, we just come before you today. Just say, Lord Jesus. And again, you can follow along up there. I believe that you are the Son of God. And you're the only way to God. That you died on the cross for my sins. And rose again from the dead. I give up all my rebellion. All my sin. And I submit myself to you as my Lord. And I just want to add this. And, and I place my own ideas on your altar. Your ways are higher than my ways. And your thoughts are above my thoughts. I confess all my sins before you. And I'm going to just pause here for a minute. Like anything that you know that you need to repent of, you can just tell the Lord. And then ask the Lord for forgiveness. And Lord, we know that you love us so much and you do forgive us. Especially our sins that expose me to a curse. You can say that. Now, you might right here want to just say some family stuff that you know that's been perpetuated in your family line. It could be drugs, sexual sin, alcoholism, abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, trauma, um, rebellion, hatred, 
jealousy, bitterness. And then just say, release me from the consequences of my ancestors' sin. All right, so by a decision of my will, I forgive all who have harmed or wronged me, just as I wanted God to forgive me. And in particular, I choose to forgive, you know, whoever that person is that comes to your mind right now or persons that hurt you. See, what you're doing is releasing yourself. You choose to forgive them, and then, you know, again, we, and we can send this out by email to you so that you can have a, a sample of praying. So, okay. So I renounce all contact, renounce all contact with, anything with anything occultic or satanic. Or satanic. If, I if I have any contact objects, I commit myself, I commit myself to, destroy to destroy them, and I cancel, and I cancel all Satan's claims all against me. Uh, Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe that on the cross, on the cross you, took on you took on yourself every curse every curse that could come upon me. So I ask you now so to release me from every curse from every over my life, my life in your precious name. Precious and, name. By and by faith, I now re uh, receive my release and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, we're not done. So I didn't type this out because I thought of this afterwards um, because of the uh, uh, bastard curse. I just want you to repeat this with me. In Jesus' name, I ask you to destroy every fortress of reasoning and knowledge that elevates itself against you. I invite you into my heart. And please help me with the process of cleansing and breaking free in my bloodline. And I repent on behalf of my family members who uh, were involved with blood covenant of murder, suicide, sacrifice, children, abortion, ritual abuse, Mass murder, Mass murder, genocide, genocide occult, activity, occult activity, and I repent for the shedding of blood, blood by my ancestors. You know, and again, especially I'm thinking if any of them were involved in wars, you know, World War One, Two, Korean War, or whatever. Ask for forgiveness because of the biggest blood altar humanity has ever seen. And Lord, I decree my freedom in Jesus' name. Uh, hold on a minute. I have another one in my, my, this one's really, they're all powerful, but I just want to read this with you. Hold on a second here. I should have opened it up. Everybody doing okay? All right, now, what I want us to do is, so just say, Lord, I thank you for cleansing me and for freedom. Now, I want to pray about sexual sin, okay? So today I confess for myself and my ancestors on my mother's and father's side that we are guilty of not having dedicated our seed to you, but rather to the lust of the flesh. We have sinned, and I ask for your forgiveness of my sins and the sins of my forefathers all the way back to Adam. I repent for any prostitution, perversion, ritual sexual practices, sodomy, sexual covenants, altars, polygamy, homosexuality, adultery, incest, masturbation, Pedophilia, Pedophilia, fornication, fornication. Ad uh, adultery. adultery. Father, I confess these things on my own behalf and on behalf of my bloodline. I plead guilty and I ask for your forgiveness. 
Father, these sins and trespasses go against my own body and against you, your principles, and your holiness. My Lord, I ask you to forgive me where I've actively served at those altars and where I supported the expansion of the kingdom of darkness. Because those altars give the kingdom of darkness power. And they are supposed to hinder the expansion of your kingdom. And I ask you that the blood of Jesus would wash away all guilt in my life and in my bloodline. Lord, wherever my name is written on those altars, I ask you to erase my name from those altars. No matter where on earth or in heavenly regions they may be, wherever my DNA may be connected to these altars, I ask you to release me through the precious blood of Jesus. And I ask you for your forgiveness for every trading platform on which I offered my seed and where I knowingly and through my own decision will have participated in that trade. Father, I confess that this trade is not a righteous trade. And this trade is a twist and is undermining your love and grace and mercy. And forgive me for this. All the way back to the, my, from my forefathers to Adam. And I ask for your forgiveness where my ancestors have entered trade where our seed was consciously sold to the devil. Father, I confess that this trade is not a righteous trade. Forgive this unrighteous trade with my seed and the seed of my forefathers all the way back to Adam. And by faith, I claim your forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. I receive my justification by Jesus Christ in his sacrifice. And righteous judge, I ask you to refuse admittance of any accusation of the accuser that he would bring forth on the foundation of sexual covenant as well as seed covenant. And I ask you on the basis of righteousness and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that these acute accusations will be repelled and that the accuser will be rejected by the blood of Jesus and the testimony of my mouth. Make me a living sacrifice on your altar. Change me so that I and my life will become, cha that change me so that my life will be a well-pleasing offering to you. I vow to you, Lord, and I proclaim before the visible and invisible world that my life, my seed, my trading belong to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and my covenant is with him and him alone. And I pray that all DNA in my blood and in my cells will come into alignment with the creational order of God. Come back to your first estate that God has planned for you from before the foundations of the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we, we are just so beyond grateful for you. Lord, we thank you for the power of the blood, our blood covenant with you that's eternal. And, Lord, we know that Jesus, in your word, says that you are our advocate. Lord, in your word in Psalms, it says you're our righteous judge. 
We know that, Lord, the church is the ecclesia, and that's a legislative term. Lord, we know the court system in heaven is political. I mean, not, you know what I'm saying. It's not political. It's uh, governmental. Thank you. And so, Lord, we just thank you that we have come before the righteous judge. We have presented our sins to the courts, and we have repented. And Jesus Christ has now said, not guilty. Our advocate has said, not guilty. So, Lord, we just thank you for the power of the blood. And we thank you, Father, that you have designed a path for us to walk in that path of freedom. And that path, oh God, is a choice of ours to surrender, to walk in your ways, oh God, to seek your face, to seek your presence and for your will, for your direction in our lives. And so, Lord, we are coming and we are going up higher. We are going from, from faith to faith and glory to glory. We are entering into a whole new level of freedom in you. And we, for that, Lord, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.